In this video, we'd like to continue our discussion on dispersion, and maybe get to the root of what causes it. So what dispersion is then is a little bit of an inconsistency that we're seeing in some of the things that we know. So we saw a couple slides last time that said if we have a prism, and you send some white light into a prism, then basically you can see the whole spectrum of light come out, where the reds are like this, the blues are like this, the greens are somewhere in between, and everything else just files in in order like that. But the problem that we're having is when we talked about Snell's Law, Snell's Law told us the angle that light bends when it comes to some interface like this. And this is a classic interface right here. Here's like an air into glass interface right here. This would be considered a, one of the interfaces in optics that we would draw normals to and figure out what Snell's Law is going to tell us about the bending of a ray. So in the example here, here's a light ray coming in. This is the way we're presented Snell's Law. And you can go ahead and draw the normal in if you want like that. And if this is something like air and this is something like glass, which it would be for a prism here, or maybe it'll be water in a future lecture when we talk about what a rainbow is, how a rainbow forms, then Snell's Law basically tells us that in a case like this, the light is going to bend towards the normal because we're going from a less dense medium to a more dense medium. But it just doesn't say anything about why the colors would separate. In other words, if you ask yourself this question here, what colors are in this white light beam right here? And we know, for example, we've just been drawing white for maybe lack of ability to choose a different color. But we know if now if we're really talking about white light, then all of the colors are going to be in this beam here. There's going to be some red. There's going to be some blue. There's going to be some green and everything in between. It's all going to be contained in this white light beam. But in the model we have for Snell's Law at the moment, all the colors are sort of sent out at the same angle. In other words, there is no, the way we were presented at the moment here, there's no wavelength uh, distinguishing in here. Nothing is distinguishing wavelength at all. So that's what we have to come up, that's what we have to figure out. And the issue is as follows here. If we recall uh, many lectures ago where I introduced the index of the index of refraction, we had a table of materials, and I'll sort of ma make that column what, and we gave some numbers here for index of refraction. So if we just run through just a couple here. You recall that outer space was just pure and simple one. Uh, something that feels like outer space, but still, as we know, has stuff in it is air. 1.007. Something still a little thicker like water was 1.33. And we'll just hit one more here, which is uh, even thicker or dense than water, which is glass, 1.55, something like that. So we sort of ended with this table here. And we discussed that these indices of refraction, which is this end right here, is exactly what Snell's Law le le needs to tell us what angle light's going to refract at. So if I go back up here, we sort of said that Snell's Law was something like n1 times theta1, n2 times theta2, where these thetas here are, of course, the angles. So we sort of need the ends to guide us, and we discussed that if you go from low to high, you bend towards the normal, high to low, you bend away from a normal, and that sort of thing. Well, it turns out in a table like this, these ends that are given here are given at a particular wavelength, and we'll say these are given at 550 nanometers. In other words, these are the numbers here that these materials behave as only when they're hit with green light. And why am I saying green light? Because that's what 550 nanometers is. That's green light. But it turns out if you're talking about other colors, these ends will be slightly different. In other words, these ends here are not constant. They are not constant for different wavelengths at all. Okay, so for example, we'll just look at the um, the important trend that we need here. Suppose we look at n for blue light. Then this is n for blue light. And I'll just sort of draw it in blue here for a second for effect. Blue light. Well, the end for space is always going to be 1.000. There's really no escaping that because space, there's just nothing there. But air, for example, for blue light might be 1.1239. In other words, instead of a 7 right here, this very last digit might become a 9. Now, it's a small effect, but nonetheless, it's there. 
And for water, it might be something like 1.35. And for glass, it might be something like 1.55. So not a huge change once again. So you see for water here, there's still the 1.3, the 1.3, but instead of a 1.33, 1.35. And instead of a 1.55 here, this 1.55 here, and sorry, I think I meant over here, this 1.55, we'll just leave it as 1.5 at the moment here. We don't want to get too crazy with numbers, but that's sort of what I meant. But the point is that you sort of see the trend here that it looks like the indices of refraction for blue, other than space, are all a tad bit larger than they are for green light, okay? And one more column we'll add to our table here. We'll just do it also for red light here. So we'll put one more N in here for red light. And space, once again, will come in at that 1.00. Air is going to come in at 1.1236, something like that. Water is going to come in at 1.32. And glass is going to come in at something like 1.54. So what you see for red, red, all the indices of refraction are a bit lower. So if you think of green as sort of the middle one here, red here at about 700 nanometers, and blue here, of course, around 400 nanometers or so, something like that. Uh, the trend that you notice here is that given comparison with these right here, these are all going to be a little higher and these are all going to be a bit lower. And that's the way the index refraction works. So the table just had to be extended a bit in our initial discussion. As I said, the numbers were quoted for green light and we went on and understood a lot of things about optics and how things refract and all that sort of thing. But if you want to get into this color separation business now, you have to get very particular about what wavelength are we talking about? So the general trend here, which we'll pick up in the next video then, is that basically the lower wavelength that you have, <clears throat> the higher end you'll get. And you can see that from the table here. Blue is the lowest wavelength of all of them here that are listed in the table. Between 500, 400, and 700, blue is the lowest wavelength, but they have the higher indices or fraction of any on the table. 1.009 versus 7 and 6. And if you go to the highest wavelength on the table, which is the red light, the 700 nanometers, well, those have all the lowest of the indices of refraction. 1.0006 versus 9 and 7 and so on. You can see that. So the empirical law that we have here is that the index refraction loosely is proportional to 1 over the wavelength. And there's your inverse proportionality right there. Again, the higher wavelength, the lower end, the lower wavelength, the higher end. So we'll pick this up in the next video.